the Wind Pay Fantasy Novels series. Coiling Dragon also known as Pan Long, by I.E. Tomatoes. Please support the author by buying the original book on the link below. Book 17 Indigo Prefecture, Chapter 27, Bestowal Above Bloodbath Gorge, at the edges of the cliff. A large group of people was standing here, with the leader being the Patriarch and the Grand Elder. What are they doing here? Linley was somewhat puzzled. Linley immediately flew over, but before he even had the chance to salute, the Patriarch, Gislason, laughed and said, Welcome back, Linley. By the side of the Patriarch was the Grand Elder, dressed in a long black robe and wearing that silver mask. Well done, Linley. The Grand Elder spoke as well. Linley, quite impressive. You killed two seven-star fiends. Admirable, admirable. The nearby Elder Garvey laughed loudly as well. Elder Linley's very first act is so impressive. The golden-haired Elder, Forgan, laughed brightly as well. Faced with the praise of the Patriarch and this group of Elders, Linley was rather stupefied. My clones as well as clones of the other squad members left behind in Bloodbath Gorge haven't gone to inform the Patriarch or the Grand Elder of this matter yet. Because the trip back wasn't too long of a trip, Linley had been planning to make the report upon returning. Who would have imagined that the Patriarch and the Grand Elder already knew about it? What he didn't know Dot was that this sort of wonderful news pertaining to their clansmen would also be very quickly reported back to the four Divine Beasts clan by their intelligence agents. Enough. Everyone, don't just stand here. Come. I've already ordered for a grand banquet to be prepared for celebration. Gislason laughed loudly, then looked at Linley. Linley, come, walk with me. Linley immediately flew over. Gislason slapped Linley on the shoulders, his face wreathed in smiles. Well done. Just luck, Linley immediately said. If he had fought them head on, those two seven star fiends definitely would have been stronger than him. Thus, he succeeded only because he suddenly killed one, and then gathered his forces to join together to kill the other one. Why so humble? Gislason laughed. This time, I really was quite worried about him. I didn't expect that the mission would be completed even more perfectly than I could have helped for. The Grand Elder said. Immediately, Gislason, the Grand Elder, and Linley flew together in front of that group of Elders, as well as the lucky survivors of Squad 13, straight into the depths of the Skyrite Mountains. After a long time, Linley's group arrived at a lavishly, great crystal palace. Quite a few maid servants of the clan were carrying platters in a steady stream into the palace. The palace was very wide, and it was tens of meters high as well. Within the palace, there were nine stone pillars that were holding the ceiling up. The Patriarch and the Grand Elder flew straight to the front of the palace, then sat down together. In the clan, the status of the Patriarch was just slightly higher than that of the Grand Elder. However, in the clan, the Patriarch and the Grand Elder were considered the highest level figures, while the other Elders were subordinate to them. All of you, take your seats. Patriarch Gislason waved his hand and laughed. Linley, you can take the seat of honor to the left. Gislason pointed to a seat, then laughed. After all, today's celebratory banquet is held in your honor. Me? Linley was stunned. There were quite a few elders more powerful than him, and his record of accomplishments was still quite low. Linley, since the Patriarch told you to sit, then sit. A silver-haired, cold-faced youth walked over, a rare smile on his face. Elder Blue. Linley nodded, then sat. As for this Elder Blue, he sat down directly next to Linley, in the secondary seat of honor on the left. 
nobody dared say anything when he took this spot. After all, this Elder Blue was the clan's genius elder. According to legend, his power was only inferior to that of the Patriarch and the Grand Elder, and was vastly superior to that of the other elders. One of the three trump cards of the clan. In addition, when their ancestor, the Azure Dragon was still alive, he doted dearly on Blue, and had spent a large amount of effort to strengthen Blue's body, making Blue's body extremely powerful. Our four Divine Beasts clan has battled with the eight great clans for 10,000 years, but such major victories have been very rare. Seated at the front of the palace, Gislason let out a sigh. Normally speaking, if one side felt they would be unable to win, they would immediately flee. To kill a seven-star fiend who was trying to flee was very difficult. Killing two seven-star fiends in a row, with one's own side suffering only minimal losses, was extremely rare. It's rare to have such a magnificent victory. If we can kill two of their seven-star fiends every time, no matter how many experts the eight great clans have, they won't be able to last against us. Immediately, some elders began to laugh. The entire palace became filled with the sound of laughter. Linley, what is it? Blue, seated next to Linley, realized that Linley wasn't laughing. I'm fine. I'm just thinking about Elder Ahaus, and the sacrifices of the many other elders. Linley sighed softly. Immediately, quite a few elders in the hall fell silent. Over the past 10,000 years of non-stop battle, when they had slaughtered the enemy seven star fiends, their own side's experts had been steadily dwindling as well. Six star fiends died in entire batches. The foundation of power which the clan had built up over countless hundreds of millions of years was being steadily whittled away. What sort of attitude is this, all of you? The Grand Elder barked. Everyone couldn't help but look at the Grand Elder. The Grand Elder said coldly, even if our entire four Divine Beasts clan dies out, we won't permit those eight clans to besmirch the reputation of our clan. When our ancestors were present, did those eight great clans dare to resist us? But now that the ancestor is dead, they'll come for revenge? Hem. How can clowns like these possibly make our four Divine Beasts clan submit? For the sake of the clan, so what if we die? Elder Blue said arrogantly as well. For the sake of the clan. Linley, too, could sense the arrogance and pride of the many elders in the palace. That they would rather die than submit. As their saying goes, better to be a shattered piece of jade than an undamaged tile of brick. For the sake of the clan? Linley said quietly in his heart. When he was young. Linley had always wanted to retrieve the ancestral heirloom of the Barach clan, the Warblade Slaughterer. Linley had a deep sense of belonging towards the Barach clan. Nowadays, although he had joined the Azure Dragon clan and met countless clansmen who had the same draconic lineage as he did, and thus had a sense of belonging. Dot Linley still couldn't completely understand that sort of pride and arrogance. If Linley was in control of the clan, he probably would have his clansmen all hide themselves within the Skyrite Mountains and wait for the day when they had a 90% chance of success in gaining revenge. Before going and battling with the enemy. Perhaps dot it's because I never experienced the glory days of the four Divine Beasts clan. Linley said to himself. The arrogance of the four Divine Beasts clan came from countless years of being mighty countless years of glory. The illustriousness of the clan had long ago been embedded in the hearts of every single elder. Enough. Gislason laughed loudly. Just look at those looks on your faces. Today is a day of celebration. Why are we all discussing those things? Come, let's have a toast. Enough of that topic. Today. Let's just drink to our heart's content and have a good celebration, a celebration for Linley's victory. Yes, let's celebrate. 
All of the elders raised their wine glasses while looking towards Linley. Linley couldn't help but feel the blood boiling in his veins. He, too, raised his glass, and each and every single member of Squad 13, seated at the margins of the palace, all raised their cups as well. Cheers. Gislason said brightly. Cheers. Everyone in the palace replied, and they all downed their wine in one gulp. During this banquet, nobody else raised any dispiriting matters. There had been far too many brutal, vicious happenings over the past few years. A good celebration was long past overdue. But this sort of happiness only made Linley feel all the more aware of the dreary sadness hidden behind this formerly unsurpassably powerful four divine beasts clan. The dreary desolateness of an ancient clan which had fallen. But although they had fallen, the clan still had their pride. Even in the face of despair, they wouldn't compromise at all. Anybody who wanted to attack the clan in their moment of weakness would have to pay an enormous price as well. The celebratory mood of the banquet finally came to an end, and each of the elders left. Linley and the members of Squad 13 were about to leave as well. Linley. Stay. The voice of the patriarch came from the front of the palace. Linley couldn't help but feel puzzled but he immediately instructed the members of Squad 13, you can go back first. Yes, Captain. Molina and the others all flew back. Linley returned to the palace. The many platters within the palace were currently being taken away by the serving maids at high speed. Patriarch Gislason walked down from his position at the front of the palace, then instructed, Linley, let's chat inside. Yes, Patriarch. Linley followed Gislason into a side room next to the palace. The side room wasn't very large. After Linley walked into it, he only heard a squeak as the door actually closed automatically. Sit. A hint of a smile was on Gislason's face. Linley sat down, then asked, Patriarch, is there something you need? I made you an elder but I didn't expect that during the conclave of elders, they would actually have you go to Bloodbath Gorge. By the time I found out about it, I couldn't order you to come back. Gislason sighed. You are only a god. It isn't very appropriate to have you in Bloodbath Gorge. Gislason valued Linley very highly. One reason was because of Linley's connection to his father the Azure Dragon, while the other reason was because of the power which Linley had displayed. I originally thought that my younger sister wouldn't give you any assignments, but who would have thought that she did? Gislason continued. The other elders are all fight on behalf of the clan. How can I be an exception? Linley said. Gislason's eyes lit up. Laughing, he nodded. Actually, my younger sister and I were both mistaken about each other. I had thought dot that my younger sister wouldn't send you to do battle. But my younger sister thought dot that I had already given you sovereign's might, and so you would be able to protect yourself. That's why she sent you off. Sovereign's might? Linley said, puzzled. Right. Gislason nodded as he spoke. Generally speaking, Anyone who can become an elder of our four divine beasts clan would soon afterwards be bestowed a drop of sovereign's might. But there must be an explanation given for this bestowal of sovereign's might. You have to have accomplished some sort of meritorious deed, at least. That matter between you and Emmanuel? That was just causing trouble. Although you became an elder, it wasn't appropriate for me to bestow a sovereign's might upon you right away. But this time, you can be considered to have rendered great merits. With a flip of his hand, Gislason revealed a drop of azure water. Contained within that azure water drop was a power that made one's heart tremble. Today, I bestow upon you this drop of water type sovereign's might, Gislason said. As he spoke, 
the drop of sovereigns might float it towards Linley. Linley, watching that drop of sovereigns might float towards him, was utterly stunned. Bestowing sovereigns might to him? He himself already had two drops. But of course, at a time like this, Linley couldn't refuse. Thank you, Patriarch. Linley hurriedly stretched his hand out, accepting this drop of sovereign's might. Gislason laughed and nodded. Now that you have a drop of sovereign's might, even if you run into some sort of critically dangerous situation, you'll be able to stay alive. But Linley, unless the situation is truly critical, you cannot waste this drop of sovereign's might. If you are forced to use it, you need to wipe out the enemy. Linley lowered his head to look at the drop of sovereign's might. This was a drop of the power of a sovereign, but could it truly be used to save his life? Would it be able to defend against the soul attacks of others? Linley still clearly remembered that scene of how that Mosley executed his innate divine ability. Patriarch, can it be that sovereign's might can be used to defend against soul attacks? Linley hurriedly asked. As Linley saw it, a sovereign's power should be to a sovereign what divine power was to a deity. It shouldn't have much to do with the soul. Of course it can. Gislason laughed. How? Linley said, puzzled. It shouldn't be possible for ordinary material force to block soul attacks, right? Gislason laughed even harder. Linley, are you under the impression that a sovereign's power is just the advanced version of divine power? Isn't it? Linley said, puzzled. Wrong. Gislason shook his head. Sovereign's might is very unique. For example, dot it can actually strengthen our bodies. Gislason took a deep breath, then said seriously, Linley, that year. My father explained to me that after he became a sovereign dot his body only contained a single type of energy. Sovereign power. What do you mean? Linley said, puzzled. Of course a sovereign would have sovereign power. What I mean is dot sovereigns don't even have spiritual energy. Gislason said. Well, Linley was stupefied. The soul was a person's foundation. Anyone who had a soul would naturally have spiritual energy. Or, to be more precise, sovereign power is the same as spiritual energy. Gislason laughed. Thus, sovereign's might is capable of not just being a material energy source, it can also be used an energy source for the soul. Ah? Linley was shocked. You can rely on it to unleash material attacks but you can also use it to unleash soul attacks. Naturally, you can also rely on it to block against soul attacks. Gislason said. Book 17. Indigo Prefecture, Chapter 28, Freedom. In the past, Linley had known very little regarding Sovereign's might. Thus, he had taken it for an advanced form of divine power. But now, it seemed, it was completely different. Sovereign's might was actually capable of being used like spiritual energy. Sovereign's might also has one other benefit. Gislason laughed. When you use Sovereign's might, for a short moment, both your body and your soul will be uplifted. Eh? Linley was surprised. This is the truth. Gislason sighed. However, the amount of uplifting isn't very great. If one was willing to be wasteful and consecutively use hundreds of drops of Sovereign's might, both the soul and the body will be tremendously transformed. Hundreds of drops. 
Who has that many? Linley laughed. Even if someone does have that many, they wouldn't be willing to waste it like that. Gislason said. Our four divine beasts clans one and only advantage over the eight great clans is that we have quite a bit of sovereign's might. Gislason sighed. By relying on sovereign's might, we are able to be at the level where even when under group assault, we can still fight back. This is the only reason why we've been able to keep the death ratio at one to one. Linley nodded. After this recent experience, Linley realized how powerful the enemy was. For example, Mosley's innate divine ability truly was terrifying. Now that our ancestors have died, the more sovereigns might we use up, the less we have. Gislason warned. Linley, you cannot waste this sovereign's might. Unless the situation is critical, using it simply isn't worth it. Yes, Patriarch, Linley replied. Even the four divine beasts clan had a dwindling stockpile of sovereign's might. Enough. You can go back for now. In the upcoming period of time, my younger sister shouldn't assign you any more missions. After all, after this experience, the eight great clans will be very much on their guard against you. In the future, it won't be so easy for you to kill two seven star fiends. Gislason laughed. Linley nodded, then immediately left. Dot. 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 Indigo Prefecture, the Eastern Borders. Four of the eight great clans were located here, amongst them the Barbary clan which had moved here from the Divine Water Plain. Deep within a dark estate, a giant was standing within a flower garden. He was 3.5 meters tall, and his face was covered with a green beard, each hair looking like a steel needle. He was dressed in a plain, unadorned set of armor, and on his shoulders, there was a black, serpent-patterned cloak attached. This person was staring directly at Cole, who was standing before him. Cole, you were killed without even being able to fight back? The giant said, frowning. Patriarch, I, I didn't expect. Cole's face was filled with rage. He clearly was just a god, but who would have imagined that he was just hiding his aura? When he was very close to me, he suddenly ambushed me. I didn't have any chance to react at all. Currently, Cole only had his Divine Wind clone remaining. Not just me. Even Mosley wasn't able to detect that this person was hiding his aura, Cole said hurriedly. This Patriarch of the Barbary clan frowned even more deeply. Patriarch, based on what the clones of my subordinates told me, the person who killed me didn't have an extremely powerful soul defense, Cole said hurriedly. Eh? The Barbary clan's Patriarch couldn't help but grow puzzled. He swept his gaze towards the outside of the garden, and instantly, a black shadow flitted in from outside, standing there respectfully. Quickly go investigate if there is a new elder within the Azure Dragon Clan who is skilled at hiding his power. The Patriarch of the Barbary Clan instructed. Yes, Elder. The Black Shadow vanished once more. Dot. After having completed the last mission, the Grand Elder wouldn't possibly send Linley into battle once more in the near term. Thus, Linley rejoined Bibi, Delia, Caesar, and the others in the gorge, enjoying some rare, peaceful days. More than two years had passed since the last assignment. In the past two years, not many things happened. On this day, Linley and Delia were currently eating some food together. Delia, she dot seems to have something she wants to say. Linley laughed to himself. Today, Delia was very absent-minded as she ate, as though she wanted to say something but didn't. Linley. Delia hesitated a long time, then finally spoke. Linley chuckled. 
He had been waiting a long time for her to speak. Delia, what is it? Delia paused a moment, then said, Linley, we've been here in the Skyrite Mountains for quite some time. It's been eighty years now, right? Right. Linley nodded. What of it? Linley, we rushed all the way here to Indigo Prefecture, then entered the Skyrite Mountains. Right, we've returned to your clan, but Dot are we just going to stay in the Skyrite Mountains forever? Delio asked him instead. Linley couldn't help but frown. Delia, you want to leave? You want to depart from the Skyrite Mountains? Linley felt this came out of nowhere. No, that's not what I mean. Delia said hurriedly. Actually, I want to follow the forces of the clan to go on a trip to the cities. No Linley refused decisively. It's too dangerous. No. It's not dangerous. Delia said hurriedly. In fact, it's not just me. Bibi, Dylan, and the others all want to go on a trip outside. Linley, we've been in this same place without going anywhere else this entire time. It's not as bad for you. You can train and you can go battle. But the rest of us are just here in this gorge every day. After a long period of time, we all feel rather stifled. Linley was stunned. He understood what Delia meant. To be in a single place with no contact with the outside world. It wouldn't be so bad at first, but after more time passed, one would feel terribly depressed. If a very long period of time passed. One would be accustomed to being depressed and lonely, at which point one's very temperament would change. Delia, in particular, had accompanied Linley on their long journey over here. Her heart, like his, was a free one, which couldn't endure this sort of restrictions. Delia, I understand your feelings. Linley nodded. In the past, when he had entered the mountain range of magical beasts for training for three years, he only had Bibi by his side for those three years. That sort of solitary, lonely life was indeed quite stifling. He himself had only been able to hold on and persevere because of his hatred, which had let him endure it all. Delia, I'm sorry. Linley reached out to take Delia's hand. At this moment, Linley came to a realization. He had been too selfish. He always thought of things from his own viewpoint. He wanted to return to his clan. He wanted to battle in Bloodbath Gorge for the clan. But he hadn't considered the situation from Delia and Bibi's viewpoints. He himself could live a very exciting life. But what about them? Always in their little gorge, living a leisurely, dull life. Bibi was the lively sort, and Delia enjoyed her freedom as well. Linley himself liked an exciting, lively life. Nobody liked to live a flavorless, boring life. He had completely neglected Delia and Bibi. Thinking of this, Linley couldn't refrain from saying, Delia, I truly am sorry. Say no more. Delia laughed and shook her head. It's fine. I just want to go for a slight change in atmosphere. Once I'm in a better mood, I'll be fine. I want you to go out and relax as well. Only, it really is very dangerous. Linley said nervously. Linley, it really isn't dangerous. Delia said hurriedly. Actually, the Azure Dragon Clan has quite a few clansmen who often go to the nearby cities to go sightseeing and shopping. It truly isn't dangerous. It isn't dangerous? Linley didn't understand. Linley, if you don't believe me, you can ask the other elders. Delia immediately said. Oh? Linley nodded. How about this? Delia, you wait here. I'll go ask the other elders. If there really isn't much danger, I'll let you go. Linley didn't want his wife to be too stifled either. 
Linley immediately flew up through Dragon Avenue, constantly pondering in his mind Delia's words. The more he thought of it, the more he felt that he had neglected Delia, Bibi, and the others. They had all accompanied him to the Skyright Mountains. But in the end, they had to stay in that gorge and didn't dare to leave it at all. This sort of life, akin to living in a prison dot was this what he had to offer for Delia and Bibi? From afar, through the corner of his eyes, Linley saw a person flying in the air. It was the familiar figure of Elder Garvey. He hurriedly shouted, Elder Garvey. Puzzled, Elder Garvey turned to look, then laughed and flew over. Linley, what a coincidence. Linley laughed, Elder Garvey, there's something important I want to ask you about. Come, let's chat over there. Linley and Garvey flew together to a nearby location halfway up the mountain. Linley, what is it? Garvey asked, puzzled. Our clan often has people who go to the cities? Linley asked. Oh. Yes, we do, actually. Garvey laughed. First of all, our clan needs to buy some things on occasion. Secondly, our clansmen are always trapped here within the Skyright Mountains. Quite a few of them can't stand this type of restriction, and so they'll go out to improve their mood. However, each time, the number of people permitted to leave is limited. Is it dangerous? Linley asked. There's not much danger. Garvey laughed. In the past 10,000 years, there hasn't been a single incident. Aren't we in a state of war against the eight great clans? How can it be that our clansmen are in no danger when heading out? Linley didn't understand. Linley, think about how vast the infernal realm is. Do you think running into someone is a simple matter? The battles which occur between us and the eight great clans occur because both of us are consciously seeking them out. It's only because they travel on predetermined routes and because we have intelligence agents constantly monitoring those routes that we are able to so easily run into them. Linley nodded. As for our clan, when a group of us ride a single metallic life form and go to a city, there's no way we can be on a predetermined route, Garvey said. This world is incomparably vast, and we can go anywhere we please. In addition, on our way over, even if the eight great clans see a metallic life form, there's no way they would know that it belongs to our Azure Dragon Clan. Linley began to understand. More important, they can't send seven star fiends just running around randomly everywhere. Even if an intelligence agent of theirs discovers that we are aboard a metallic life form, the metallic life form will quickly fly off into the distance, and because the route is not predetermined, there's no way the enemy can possibly guess where the metallic life form has flown to. Garvey laughed. Linley nodded to himself as well. The chances of both being encountered as well as being recognized really was one in a hundred million. Most importantly of all. Each time our clansmen go a group, an elder will be the escort. Garvey laughed. This to guard against any unforeseen circumstances. If we really are so unlucky as to encounter an enemy seven star fiend within this vast area, then we'll just have to engage in battle. Linley, hearing this, felt relieved. The chances of being encountered really were too low. It was virtually impossible, in fact. And even if there was an encounter dot his side had a seven star fiend on guard. What? Do you have family or friends who want to go out and relax? Garvey asked. Right. Linley suddenly thought of the limitations Garvey had mentioned with respect to how many people could participate. How many people can go each time? 500 people per trip. Garvey nodded. Don't worry. As an elder, it will be very simple for you to arrange some family and friends to be included. In addition, if you really are worried, you can escort them yourself as well. If a problem occurred even when two elders are escorting, 
that would truly be quite bizarre, wouldn't it? Linley's eyes lit up. Linley himself was interested in accompanying Delia into the city for a nice stroll. The elders of Bloodbath Gorge are cyclically assigned to missions. I'm not doing anything right now anyhow. Linley immediately flew back towards Bloodbath Gorge and asked to meet with the Grand Elder. In the Azure Dragon Palace, the Grand Elder stared at Linley through her mask. What? You want to go out? The Grand Elder said coldly. Grand Elder, I just want to accompany our clansmen on a trip to the city, Linley said. I can't permit it right now. The Grand Elder shook her head. Recently, the battle between us and the eight great clans has been fairly fierce. I might need to send you out on a mission at a moment's notice. Linley, the clan is more important. After your thousand years are up and you retire from Bloodbath Gorge, you can go where you please. Linley was stunned. He, too, knew that the battles had been very fierce, but he hadn't been sent on a mission in the past two years, after all. Going to a city was a trip of just a few months. For now, stay within the Skyrite Mountains. Based on how our intelligence reports develop, I might have a mission for you very soon. The Grand Elder said. Yes, Grand Elder. Linley didn't particularly want to go visit the city himself anyways. The only reason he wanted to go was to protect Delia better. It's within an area of a trillion square kilometers dot and why would a seven star fiend be so bored as to just wander about randomly? And the chances of them recognizing that this was a group of our clansmen? And also being to defeat one of my clan's elders? Linley considered it, then set his mind. At ease. The chances of something going wrong were virtually zero. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for the new updates of your favorite audiobooks. Please support the author by buying the original books in the description. Love and Peace. Wind Pay.